Alpha team report. What's happening, Heather? Alpha team has been responding. Bravo. Still nothing. You lost both teams. Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Green light, yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He has to be put down. And you obviously cannot do what has to be done. I am taking operational control. Asset, you have a green light. Repeat, you have a green light on born. Joining me now, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Mark Eiglarsh and criminal rights and defense attorney Ann Dell Brown. Wow. Mark, yeah. <sighs> that all her, all her, anybody who dares point the finger at law enforcement is either being intellectually dishonest or somehow really doesn't know the facts in this case. They were overly cautious. They could have shot her right away when they came in and then held back six hours they waited. And when they came in, both with the words that she used, I will kill you. Coupled with the action, not putting down this shotgun, they had to take action. She caused her death. Andel, do you agree? In a situation like this, a picture's worth a thousand words and a video is priceless. Here, we have the police account of the events, but we also had police accounts in the Walter Scott case, Laquan McDonald case, Tamir Rice case, where facts that were reported did not match up once we had a video. When we have citizens who feel the need, like in the Philando Castile or the Alton Sterling, to record interactions with police because the body cameras fell off, they aren't working, or whatever the case may be, it shows we have an issue with the trust and, and transparency and accountability. That's not what she asked. Look at her. This is her the with the gun. The this is her with a shotgun, Mark Iglarch. This, I mean, that's on that's video. That's what we're told. That's not what we see. What? So what are you suggesting, we, Andel? Are you, are you going to manufacture facts? What I'm suggesting facts? is in a Everything city like supports. Baltimore, I am looking at it right now. With the Freddie Gray, there should be using body cameras in this case. They just got the body cameras a couple of weeks ago. They're implementing that in Baltimore. Well, great. We, we need to see what happened. That's all I can say. I this can't make assumptions like Mark that it's all her without how? seeing what happened because I've seen police reports that turned out not to be true once we saw the video. But Mark Aguilar's... Okay. We're seeing. We are seeing. This is video from the moment this went down. We can play Andel's generic game. I Wait, made it before. Hold on, hold on. Andel, we'll go with what you're saying. You could throw out that generic comment all day long. We never know because we weren't there. We haven't seen reports. And sometimes reports are wrong. You're correct. But here's the question. Based upon what they're reporting, are you conceding that this was a justified shooting? Mark, what I'm saying is I'm not just going to go with what the they report. The answer is yes when or we no. Go into a, when if, we go into a court of law, saying. Mark, you don't control this interview. When we go into a court of law, we make sure we're very sure before we take someone's freedom. You just can't we make say sure the word, We go through you? many steps before we take someone's life. And when Della an was a hypothetical. Hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second. The people deserve to see and on. evaluate whether they're to correct Andel's or point. incorrect. Okay, to we and, have to keep the government honest. To your point, to Andel's point, the video of her loading up that gun was apparently from two weeks earlier. It wasn't this. This was two weeks earlier. It wasn't in the moment that she had the confrontation with the police who say she did have the long gun, who you can hear discussing with her son on the video um, that they're that they're she believes they're, they're trying to kill her. Um, and there's a question about her mental state, Mark. I mean, I don't know whether this woman was OK um, em emotionally or mentally, and the police would not confirm whether she had a history of mental health issues. But here she is. Um, just a couple of weeks earlier when she had the confrontation with police, she was pulled over. She didn't have a license plate. She considered herself a sovereign citizen. She didn't recognize the authority of the U.S. law enforcement agents. She demanded to see their authority cards. And this is a confrontation. This is a piece of tape from back then. Watch. You know they're talking about stealing my vehicle. Hey, Cody. They tell you get out this car. We'll take your seatbelt off. You do not get out this car. Do you understand? Yeah. You better fight they asses. Fight them. Do you hear me? Yeah. And they will have to kill me today. No, nobody wants they to They will you. have to. They will have to you in front of my children and everything. Why y'all burning hell? All y'all pigs.
Right, oh. So she's telling her child he has to get out. Her, I think it's her five-year-old. He has to get out and fight the police. That they're going to have to kill yeah. her to get her out of the car. The, 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 the officer asked for her license and registration. She refuses to show it. She demands to see his his authority card. He shows it to her. So the question is whether this person was of sound yeah. mind, and whether the police, if that is the case, had an obligation to do more, to not engage in a in a shootout with this person. Okay, here's my take on her. I will defend her right to spew her outrageous and offensive speech, even y'all pigs, like she said at the end. She has a constitutional right to say that. But her constitutional rights end when she begins to resist and obstruct officers, as she did in that scenario, but worse, when she shows violence, when she has a gun aimed at law enforcement officers who didn't wake up wanting to kill anybody that day. They just wanted to go home to their families, and she created a scenario that led to her tragic demise. Go ahead, and I'll give you the last word. In this circumstance, it is absolutely a tragedy whenever someone loses life or, or liberty. In this country where life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness are high ideals, we take it very seriously. So I just want to make sure that in every one of these instances, we have the transparency and accountability to keep our government honest from the cops on the street all the way up to the White House. That's what the people deserve, and that's what we want. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to pick the law. We enforce them. But at the end of the day, each and every member is to go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary, you need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is August 11th, 2016, and I'm coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern, and you can listen live on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. And to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, and SoundCloud, as well as the next day on Stitcher and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote the ideas of true freedom and liberty and self-ownership, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom, exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And we're happy to hear from you uh, via phone or via Skype. The phone number is 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-664. The Skype username is Nonpartisan Liberty for All. And you can just send us a contact request, your name and what you want to talk about, and we'll take your Skype call. You can also get that information and check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com, which has links to all our social media. So please go on Facebook, Twitter, and like our pages. And it also has the archives, which are posted on every weekend so you won't get them immediately but you can listen to last week's if you happen to be on the website as well as original articles editorials and blogs and as i have been mentioning i'm working on one that has to do with the drug war and how things should go back to how they were before 1914 that drugs should just be sold like anything else Tonight, we have a lot to cover. So last minute, I upped the show to 6 o'clock. So I don't know how many people actually got that message and are tuning in. Not that a lot of people tune in live anyway. Um, The majority of the listens are to the archives. But hopefully people have gotten that message and are tuning in. 
Tonight, we're going to talk all about uh, Black Lives Matter and how they're being exploited to push a political agenda and that they really are just a group that has been infiltrated by uh, political operatives, just like every group. I mean, they're no different than the Tea Party or Occupy Wall Street or any of those groups. And we're, we're going to get into what I believe that agenda is, as well as some last minute uh, things that I found out regarding uh, Black Lives Matter that the average member probably doesn't even know. And this doesn't represent every person that is involved with Black Lives Matter. I'm sure there are people that may participate in marches that are put on by Black Lives Matter, but that doesn't necessarily mean they consider themselves a member or uh, believe in everything that Black Lives Matter believes in. Uh, they recently came out with a list of demands, I think they called them, uh, because I'm not even sure what they stand for. But before we get into that, and this is why I wanted more time for tonight. In the beginning of the show, I played a clip regarding uh, it was from uh, Fox News. And it was regarding Corinne Gaines. And she was recently killed by the police. Unfortunately, I found out about it today. Uh, it had happened on the 1st. Now, she has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter as far as I know. So this, although has to do with the police, has to do with the government as she considered herself uh, a sovereign citizen or at least was doing some of the things that sovereign citizens do with uh, her license plate. But I have a totally different take on this than uh, most people probably do that I'm going to get into. I'm only going to go so far on it because I only have so much information at this point and I want to do a full show on it because there are so many aspects of this that actually relate to other things and other things that I I wouldn't say condone, but that I, well, I condone would actually not, it would be more than that. It would be actually support. Um, I don't support everything that happened that I know of at this point. However... Based on the information that I do have, I've come to a conclusion that I'm going to go into. And I have read multiple articles and seen multiple shows, YouTube videos, and multiple people speak on it. I still don't believe I have enough information on something like this because to really speak about it intelligently, I think I have enough to comment on it, not enough to fully come to a conclusion because I think this is a very important incident in so many ways. And I'll get into why today. And then most likely on Tuesday, I'll do a whole show on it. And it, it's tragic. She was 23 years old, a uh, beautiful girl, had two kids. She was, uh, if you had heard the initial clip, she hadn't, first of all, before, I believe it was March, she had never been arrested, never been in any trouble with the law, first of all. So that definitely is something that factors in, at least in my mind. And the police make allegations that sound like total bullshit, 
also, um, I guess Baltimore has just gotten their cameras a couple weeks ago, but of course they didn't have their cameras. She has some of it on video. I've seen most of the video. There may be more, but they already tried to take video that she took of her loading her shotgun and kind of intercut it with her in different scenes. And like one of the videos, I thought she was loading her shotgun while she was in her car with the police there, which was not the case. So one article also claimed that she used her son as a human shield because her her son got shot and most reports say they don't know if her son got shot by the police or by her. And that's what the police will fucking do. And there's examples. The Boston bombing is one of them. Uh, when they had the shootout, quote unquote shootout, where they shot one of their own guys. And the police will always lie about shit like that. So I would say that a five-year-old kid, most likely, and I saw her shotgun, and I believe it was a 12-gauge. I actually have a similar one. And I don't think a kid that small is going to be able to take a shotgun bullet. It would have had to be, have been point blank and live. And what the police were using... And I don't know this for a fact, but I would guess that they had M16s or some former AR-15s and they were using 223s. And that would make a lot more sense. Now, what happened, and I'm going to try not to get into too much because, like I said, I want to go into more detail after I have the opportunity to read even more. Um, but you have this girl never been in trouble before. Now, from what I understand, she doesn't have anything to do with black lives matter. Now that doesn't mean she doesn't support as I do, um, people that are protesting against the police when the police kill somebody or, 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 isn't on the side of the people that are um, going after the police or talking uh, about the police or protesting that obviously she is on the side of, she's not on the side of the police. She's on the other side. Uh, But it seemed like from the information I saw that she was more of a freedom advocate because she was pulled over the reason she was pulled over. And um, to be honest, for some reason, and I think it's because of what I believe, this is very upsetting to me. Um, you know, it, it, it probably doesn't hurt that she's a very beautiful girl, but I mean, that's a whole nother, I'm going to get in trouble for my girlfriend now. Um, that's a whole nother thing, but just the fact that, you know, and she was 23, she had her whole life ahead of her. Um, that doesn't hurt of course, but the fact that I've said on the show before, so many fucking times that every law is based on violence. Every law is based on the barrel of a gun. And that's what happened in this case. Because this started from not having a license plate or having a license plate, but it wasn't a real plate. It was a cardboard piece of paper that she wrote something on. Something that I had brought up in the past on this show, that something people should do, and I was saying it as more, you know, a whole bunch of people getting together and doing it, 
taking off their license plates or not registering their car and getting a license plate or both, I guess, because if you if you didn't register your car again, I guess you'd have the old license plate. So either way, going license plate list is something that I brought up as a mean means of non-compliance, not of civil disobedience. And the difference to me is civil disobedience you don't comply with the law until <laughs> it's so fucking stupid it makes no sense to me. You don't comply with the law until they use force. So you break the law but then when they tell you we're going to arrest you, we're going to kidnap you, then you listen. It 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 kind of defeats the purpose. I don't know what that does. If you get a lot of media attention, what it does is it makes the government look stupid. But at this point, because there's so many people that are just going to say, well, why didn't you just uh, listen to them? And then you wouldn't have had to deal with that. It, it doesn't even make a fucking difference anymore. And that's what you get now. A, a lot of people will, will say that. And again, we don't know how many people are on social media that are government employees posting shit, trying to shape opinions and stuff like that. And there's probably a fair amount, but there are people that, that honestly believe that, that they think, well, why are you going to go through the hassle? The same thing with DUI checkpoints. Why don't you just give them your license? Why don't you just obey? And then you tell these fucking people, because if you don't exercise your freedoms, then you don't have them anymore. And you have the same fucking people that talk about freedom and liberty and go on the radio and talk about this shit, but then talk shit about somebody because when they go through a DUI checkpoint, they don't answer the questions and they don't give their license because they don't have to unless they're suspected of being drunk. I'm sick of them motherfuckers. Like that fucker I talked about yesterday, Wayne Allen Root, the fucking douchebag. I'm sure that a motherfucker like that would say the same thing. Uh, he said something again today that uh, was uh, kind of putting down people. Oh, because Obama's going to he's going to pardon like 10 or 20,000 people and a bunch of morons or he he labeled them. Uh, something bad. And first he said Hillary. And uh, okay, fine. You know, Obama shouldn't pardon Hillary if she ended up getting charged with something. But then he said, you know, the heroin dealer. And he was referring to 10 to 20,000 people. And, and, and I doubt Obama's even going to fucking do it. But that, and if he does, they're going to be on strict parole and all of this shit when they should just be able to go free. Um, but it's it, talking about people that are on drugs, that are in jail for drugs. So he calls them whatever. And fuck you, you motherfucker, because I know you're in Vegas. So, you know, if you ever fucking see me. And um, I'm sure you'd never hear my show and whatever. And want to say something to my fucking face, you fucking arrogant douchebag. Actually, I'd rather you fucking throw a shot at me. I would love for you to actually throw a fucking shot at me so I could legally kick your fucking ass. And you know what? To be honest, I I take that back because you shouldn't want to fight people or get mad at people for their freedom of speech. And that's really what it is. But there's a difference between name calling and expressing your opinion. So I don't know. I guess you can look at it one of two ways. You can look at it at a, 
there's name calling and there which I'm doing right now and there's you know expressing your opinion and you know the one thing I well I like a lot of things about it but one thing that's good about the show is and I don't really get angry that much I when I was younger when I was a kid I got angry a lot but I don't really get angry that much um recently I haven't been very happy about some things but I'm not angry and I'm not somebody who wants to go out and hurt people or get in fights or anything like that so what that allowed me to do is get out my frustration and anger through my microphone as opposed to, you know, physically. Although I do have a punching bag, so <laughs> I have that. But it's this story um, and these people on the radio. I mean, there was him before him at the same time was that fucker Levin. Um, the only guy, honestly, conservative, because... It's the same thing with there were the progressives that were on uh, Sirius Radio. I don't have the uh, Sirius anymore. One was a gay guy. I can't remember his name. Michelangelo something who talked like this. Michelangelo. And I, I'm, I have no problem with gay people at all. I'm just, that's how he talked. And his voice was just annoying. Um, and... The other guy, uh, black guy, Mark, geez, I forget his last name, Mark Thompson or Mark Tom. I think Mark Thompson who was another idiotic douchebag. So those were the progressives. And then there's not a lot of progressives on regular radio. So the one guy that I don't I disagree with, but I don't really get mad at him is Glenn Beck, to be honest, that he occasionally I'll get a little mad. Um, I know when he was doing a whole thing on abortion, but he's generally, I don't know if he's just a really good actor, but he generally comes off as somebody who does want to help. Now I may not agree with how he wants to help or what he wants the result to be, but I think, think that at least the way he comes off and again this could be total bullshit and he's on in the morning so when I drive to work sometimes I'll, I'll listen to him just so I can get some news from other sources and then I can talk about it on the air but he generally comes off as somebody who does care um and he's not arrogant at all. He's very humble as well. And that's another thing. Like, there's no... Even when he talks about some of the stuff that he did, which is rare, it's it's in a humble way. Um, it's not in an arrogant way at all. So I don't agree with him on a lot of things i'm sure there's things that i do agree with him on um he says he leans libertarian but i i don't know but um i i don't he doesn't piss me off but these other guys and they're angry guys too especially that levin um is angry but this story um when i was listening to the clip i played at the beginning of the show and again, I, I for people that are just tuning in, I just heard about this today. Um, when I was listening to that at the beginning of the show, it it pissed me off. So I apologize for getting angry, and I apologize to uh, Wayne Allen douchebag. I don't I don't want to um, punch him in the face. <laughs> Or I don't want him to punch me in the face so I can hit him back. Um, but you you have 
everything that is enforced by the barrel of a gun. And people don't get it. They, they think, oh, it's only a traffic ticket or it's only this or it's only that. And now this girl is dead. And I know everybody's going to say, well, it's her own fault that she's dead whether it's because she didn't go to court or because she decided to stand up. And that's how I look at it. So she put a cardboard, this is in Maryland, in Baltimore, she put a cardboard license plate on her car. It wasn't a license plate, but where the license plate is. Uh, they had said exactly what it said, but it said something... Um, like a sovereign citizen type thing that about freedom to travel or something like that, which uh, I believe in. So the officers, they kept saying, well, the officers are really nice to her. Well, that they were, to be honest, they gave her every opportunity to get out of the car. Um, the only the only thing initially in this situation when she was in the car, she made a decision that, look, I have the right, she believes, and I agree with her that she has the right to travel without a fucking license plate. Although she had said that they took her license plate and there was something going on with that. So that's where I want to find some more information about things like that. But she uh, had the license plate, and I'm still not clear about insurance because it sounded like she did have insurance. She said she did, and other places I've heard that she didn't. So I need to get that straight as well. But I think it was just the license plate. And she had asked for something that, um, sovereign citizens were asked for. And going back to the sovereign citizen thing, um, some of that stuff, to be honest, I believe is true. They, like people will say, well, the U.S. is under this law as of whatever year because they declared bankruptcy in 1936 and they're still managing the bankruptcy or they did they passed this and now we're under maritime law or whatever. There, there's a, a whole bunch of theories and some of them are actually documented where you can go and see where it says. Um, the other thing was a, a citizen's jury, um, things like that, where they exist, but the court's not going to recognize them and the police aren't going to recognize them, so what's the point? And that was always my point when people would come on and talk about sovereign citizen stuff. They're like, well, if you do this, like there was somebody saying that you'd be immune to any law if you do this or whatever. Or uh, I think even Ken said about, not about that, but about uh, your birth certificate that they uh, market now. I actually believe this that they use because people are used as collateral against the debt, and that they use your birth certificate essentially as collateral against the debt, and they do. Um, whether they actually take your birth certificate itself, but that's the purpose of it. Because when they borrow money, where do you think the government is going to get more money from? They're going to get it from your taxes. So the collateral on the debt is us, is every working person that lives in this country and future generations of them are all collateral on the debt. That's all you are to this country. They own you. So, but there was something, if you wrote a certain letter, that you could get uh, like a million dollars from the government and Ken had said if you there's a certain guy that knows how to do it and I don't know that that's true or not and it may be but the whole thing is the court's not gonna they're not gonna do it and, and that's the whole thing and if you tell a judge 
even if it's true, they're gonna they're not gonna recognize it. The people that get off for sovereign citizen stuff are people that the judges get so annoyed of them bringing up the sovereign citizen uh, stuff that they just fucking say, just get the fuck out of my courtroom. But that's only on minor infractions. It, try using it for murder or for something serious because it's you're not going to annoy him out of dismissing a charge like that. Because there was one guy from Massachusetts that he doesn't have a license plate. He won't register his car. He won't get a license. So he just, he's always in court, but he doesn't resist. He just he goes in, which, again, uh, he's still alive, but what's the point? But anyway, um, a lot of times he got stuff dismissed, and he said, well you write your name in all caps or something, or you don't come all the way to the bench or whatever. But they dismissed it because, because I heard him tell the story, because they just got so annoyed that they're just like, you know, we'll just dismiss it because it's a nothing charge. So in in her case, the only issue I had with initially what happened in the car. So she's in a car she gets pulled over. Now, she was saying things that, you know, you're going to end up um, killing us or you're going to end up killing me and things like that. And the officers gave her to the last minute um, to get out of the car, but they towed her car. And she was almost home. So they didn't have to do that. And they they stole her property. And she was saying, well, you know, and you guys are going to kidnap me. And they said, well, if you don't get out the car, then we're going to arrest you. So basically, she got arrested for not having a license plate. That was it. And I guess they wouldn't have arrested her if she got out of the, the car. The, again, the one problem I have is she tells her kids to fight the police. One was like, I know one was five, and I think the younger one was three. I'm not sure how old the younger one was. So putting her kids in that situation, that's just the only issue I have. I mean, she's only 23, and she must have had them really young. And I can understand the wanting your kids to be free as well. And, uh, you know, assuming that that's what she was doing. So what she was doing really was noncompliance. And she didn't have any means of self-defense. But if she did... And she would have acted in self-defense, which she did later. I don't have a problem with that. So what happens, and, you know, a lot of people might disagree with me. And this is based on the facts that I have. So, again, I'm going to talk more about it on Tuesday and get more facts on on this. But, you know, I... believe what I believe and I'm going to say what I believe and I feel how I feel. And if, if people disagree with that and, and don't want to listen because they don't agree with me, then whatever, or maybe <laughs> it goes the, the other way too, that like, Hey, you know, this motherfucker is crazy. So let's listen to him. Um, but just like I was saying that I was listening to the assholes. So, she ended up not going to court. Now, there's a couple of different stories on this, too, that she didn't go to court because she wanted to kill herself, suicide by cop, which I don't buy that because otherwise um, there was a seven hour standoff. If that's really what she wanted, she could have went out and started shooting at them right away. Um, it didn't have to go that long so if that's what she wanted um she could have had that right away 
and it wasn't about thinking about it for seven hours. So I don't believe that. First of all, I believe what the police did was illegal. So she didn't in in what comes up. So I'll talk about that in a minute and how they got into her house, I believe, it is illegal. But so she doesn't go to court. I heard a couple reasons. I heard that. But I also heard that she didn't get and there's an actual scene with her camera where she's trying to get the information about court. So she might have not had the court date or had the wrong court date. And there might have been a mix up there. And that is totally possible. That is actually what happened supposedly with um what's the place in um idaho ruby rich where he was supposed to show up for court and he didn't but that they purposely sent them the wrong court date i i don't know but that turned into a, a whole mess um anyway so i don't know that she there's there's three things here i guess one she purposely just wasn't going to go to court the two that they're saying she wasn't going to go to court because she wanted suicide by cop but that's bullshit because she could do that at any time not only at her house but she could just take her gun and fucking walk down the street and get somebody to call the cops and do suicide by cop so that's bullshit um that's not a reason and the other reason is that they her court date either they purposely gave her the wrong one or she made a mistake or something happened there because even you know a lot of the sovereign citizens like to go to court and argue that shit so i don't know what her plan was there. However, they got a key from the manager. I'm assuming they lived in an apartment to get into the house. How can you, you think about that for a minute? Because what happens when there's warrants, especially warrants like this, that are bullshit warrants, her, her boyfriend had a warrant too. But his warrant was so, uh, it was assault, but it obviously wasn't that bad because they released him on personal recognizances on a warrant. So whatever he did wasn't that bad because they don't release you on personal recognizances unless it's something, you know, that's uh, minor. So, and he got out that, that same day. So the fact that, uh, they had warrants out, they don't have a right to get a key to your house and go in there for warrants like that. They can stake out your house and wait for you to come out. But if you don't answer the door, they don't have a right. And this fuck at the beginning that was on um, the Fox show, the Megyn Kelly show, you know, oh, she violated the Constitution and blah, blah, blah. Fuck, fuck him. OK, because requiring a license plate, you could argue violates the Constitution and your freedom to travel anyway. So just shut the fuck up, please. So they get a key from the manager. Which. If the country actually followed their own fucking laws, it's totally illegal as far as I'm concerned. And it's it's just it's ridiculous. The fact that they were able to get a key from a manager. So she had bought a shotgun. She made some posts on Twitter and essentially she wouldn't come out. She said, no, I'm not coming out. There was a seven-hour standoff. Her kids were there, and that's the only... I guess the husband uh, took off with one of them, 
because I think only one of them was his or the boyfriend, but the five year old was still there. And I believe that at the house, the police put her in that position, you know, coming to the house and illegally entering there. But what she did was say, look, you had no right to, you know, I have the right to travel and you have no right to kidnap me and take me from my house. And I don't know at that point why it happened when it did. Um, I think they they try to say, of course, that she fired first. I seriously doubt it. I'm sure the police started firing at her. Whether she even fired at all to me is in question because everything the police say is in question. They might have just fired at her. I believe that they hit the kid and, of course, they killed her. Now, based on that information, I would call it an extreme case because I think that having two kids and being in a situation like that from beginning to end, it wasn't something that, you know, she put herself out there and said, I'm not going to comply. I'm sick of this shit. And what you guys are doing is wrong. And there's no victim for this crime. And if you attack me, I'm going to defend myself. And again, I don't know if she actually fired or they just say, say that, but that's what happened. And that's what, I mean, this is, I would say, a extreme example at this point. So what I mean is at this point in time, the way things are, I would say that is an extreme example. But I would say essentially the cops broke into her house, which they don't have a right to, even if they have a warrant. Because that's an arrest warrant, not a search warrant. An arrest warrant doesn't mean you can just walk in somebody's house. And, you know, I believe that basically what she did was not comply and then defend herself. Now, it's unfortunate what happened. And... I don't think that she should have took it to that level at this point, especially with based on what happened. There may be a time where, yeah, I would say that people need to take it to that point as far as, you know, not complying and defending themselves, but it, depends on what's going on um so i don't feel what she did was the right thing to do i think she made i think she made a bad decision and a bad choice but i totally understand what she was doing but It wasn't, I think, the time or the place or the situation to do something like that. And I I think, you know, in the future, the more it becomes a total police state and, you know, in, in her situation, it really... Even initially, I mean, I give her a lot of credit for what she did with the license plate because she, you know, she was like, fuck it, I'm going to I'm going to do this. But I don't know how well she thought out what is she going to do when she gets pulled over. 
and having her kids with her and all of those things. And so it's not something I believe that she should have done. However, I look at it as an, an example. Unfortunately, I think it was somewhat extreme and the way that she handled it with her kids in the car, I don't think was too good, but that's, I think where, you know, things may get to at some point. And I don't think over, something like that, like the same circumstances. I mean, I don't believe when they pulled her over, you know, it was that anything, any racism took place in the first example, not example, but the first part when she got pulled over, because they were being nice to her and they were going to let her go so many times. But you could say, well, why did they pull over in the first place? Or why didn't they just let her, she didn't have that much further to drive, you know? And I think that she was within her every right to, it's her fucking car. And these are the things that people don't think about. Now, I'm not saying get in a fucking gunfight over it. But what I am saying is that she, I believe, was within her rights with what she did. I just don't believe it was what she should have done. And she definitely put herself out there in a, you know, the the driving around with no no plate she knew what she was doing and you know um she was trying to fight back against the system in her own way now if 10,000 other people did that what are they going to do and that's where it being unorganized and just being one person of course they're going to go after that person but if it's a whole bunch of people, that's where there's not much they can do. And obviously, we don't want to see situations like that where a girl's dead. Because of a traffic stop, of a traffic law, where she didn't hurt anybody. And for all we know, she never even fired a fucking bullet. So we'll talk more about this on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to get more into the details. And, you know, this is not the same thing as the guy's what they did in Dallas and Baton Rouge. It's not even close to the same thing. This is where, you know, she wanted to be left alone. Just leave me alone. She wasn't even breaking traffic laws. Now, whether she wanted to hurt police or not, you know, that's another thing. And that is not a good way to be neither, to have, you know, to want to hurt somebody. You know, I had even said before, even if somebody broke into my house and I shot them, that I would call it an unfortunate situation but I would probably still feel bad because they don't deserve to die because they broke in my house. Now, them breaking in my house 
I have the right, but it doesn't mean that they deserve it. It's an unfortunate situation. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's sad what the happened here. And, you know, the other thing is, well, could the police handle it in a different way and all of that and, and whatnot. But, I think no matter how you look at it, if they would have arrested her, that's they broke into her house, as far as I'm concerned, or illegally got into her house and and kidnapped her. For what? For fucking, you know, and she... To really look at it for what it is, again, based on the information I have now, she had the balls to say, no, I'm not going to take this. You're not just going to get a key from the manager and just come right in my house because I didn't have a license plate on my car because you created a law that I never agreed to anyway in which it doesn't hurt anybody where you're extorting money from me because that's really what it is is it's extortion it's literally extortion because look what happened if you don't follow it you die and if you try to defend yourself look what happens And no one's going to think of it in that sense. Hopefully some people will listen and and understand the context of what happened, you know. And then the other thing they keep bringing up is, well, was she mentally ill? Did she have, you know, things going on? I, I mean, from what I saw, I would say no, that she was really believed in um, what she believed in. And I, again, I I think it was a, a waste of her life in this case, but that's the decision that she made, but maybe she was having some issues and that influenced her decision. I I don't know. So I'm going to take a quick break. I have a lot of clips to play. When we come back, we'll talk about Black Lives Matter, how they are being exploited for political gain, and also that a lot of those signs have websites of communist revolutionary uh, groups. And I bet most people didn't know that. So, and I'll actually point, um, point out, I have the pictures up actually in the apps of the show where you could see right on there, uh, the website and put in that website and see see where it brings you. So, um, and we'll also talk about how what they're doing is taking the focus off of uh, the police getting away with what they're getting away with and having too much power and making it just about race and. I could go and I actually did earlier to killed by police and, you know, name off a whole bunch of white males, white females, Latino males, Latino females that were killed by police, too. Yes, there is racism that factors in. I think black people are harassed and and 
killed at a higher uh, percentage based on population. But at the same time, this is a problem with the police. This is a problem with the police having too much power. And it's also about, you know, having a group do your dirty work for you with probably most of the people that are part of that group not even knowing it. And that's even worse. So check us out at Nonpartisan Liberty for All dot com. I forgot the dot com. And we will be back right after this. Nonpartisan Liberty for All dot com. It's just as bad as the police. Yeah, Black Lives Matter. Black people are just. I want to preface or preface this uh, clip. I I don't necessarily celery. I don't. <laughs> I can't say that word. I don't agree with everything in this. Uh, but this this guy makes some points. Um, it's called "Why I Left Black Lives Matter Movement." But there's some of the shit that he says. L- let me before I actually even play anything. Let me say that I support all people and anybody who is down for true freedom and liberty. Those are my people. I don't identify with any race or feel like part of a race, you know, in that sense. Um, My fiance is Mexican growing up i hung around with uh in high school all black kids i've talked about this before that we had a uh in the lunchroom there was like the one all black table and uh you know i had sat there and i got racism from both sides um so see why more uh, black people in general are want and people know. Of course, in government media, they want you to think that every black person wants, uh, you know, welfare programs and handouts and all this shit. And that's not the, that's not the truth. You know, more white people are on welfare and public assistance than black people. Um, not percentage wise, but you know, as a whole, of course. So it's, they want you to think a certain way when it's really a small percentage. I mean, even if you take, and this is a, would be a big percentage, 15% and it's not even that high, that would still leave 85% that uh, aren't on public assistance, you know, which is, millions of people it's just that 15 percent or 10 percent or even five percent which i think is probably closer um is millions of people because we're in a country that is so fucking big and people don't realize that so they they think that well there's there's millions of black people that are on public assistance yeah but there's also you know, 50 million or or so or 60 million black people in the whole country. So that's nothing. So looking at things that way, um, you know, is how the government media wants you to do that, but it's not the reality. So anyway, they want to try to shape people's opinions that's what they're trying to do and that's what they're definitely trying to do with what's going on with black lives matter and we'll get to that when we get back but i just wanted to mention that and mention that this uh clip especially is not um there's other clips too that i don't agree with a lot of it but i'm just playing uh different opinions that i had found um on youtube so So we'll be right back after this, and I'll continue this clip. Just as important as anybody else. But Black Lives Matter fucking sucks, dude. 
And we don't want to admit that this is existence Still scared to acknowledge the benefits of our white privilege Cause it's human nature to want to be part of something different Especially when your ancestors are European I've been putting off on making this video for a long ass time, but with the recent events regarding police brutality occurring, I feel like I have to address this issue. Understand that I don't think black lives don't matter, and of course, black people are not worth any less than any other race. We are all the same species. And yes, a racial disparity based on stereotypes does exist in the USA. But Black Lives Matter, despite what you may think, is doing nothing to solve this issue. As a fuckton of you know, my general philosophy when it comes to politics is a combination of left-wing and right-wing ideals. Mainly left-wing ones, especially when it comes to social issues, but I just... I just can't get behind Black Lives Matter, dude. Sir, can I ask you why are you, why are you cursing a police? Man, f*** the police and f*** you too! The majority of Black Lives Matter's foundation is founded on lies. Can we take a second to understand just how violent and terribly racist BLM has been? The movement has taken a disgusting turn for the worse and is marching down the streets chanting the dead fucking police. <laughs> And now I ask, how can a movement that has publicly advocated for the murder of a certain group get its own emoji on Twitter and be embraced by the likely president of the fucking United States of America? Because of the constant need to be as tolerant as possible has made us tolerant of fear tactics and violence instead of opposing it under the guise of being progressive. When in reality, BLM is regressive as fuck, dude. You think white people you should be killed, huh? You thought we should be killed when y'all came and stole us from Africa and put us in chains and murdered us for over 400 years, so yeah, you do need to die. Martin Luther King is rolling in his fucking grave right now, dude. Meanwhile... That's only one person. I don't know how many people have that attitude or perspective, but one thing that is evident and is a fact nobody alive today was ever a slave at least the slavery we're referring to that happened uh in the 17 and 1800s and no one alive today was a slave owner so the concept that you're somehow responsible for what ancestors or relatives did. And I know I have no relatives that were um, either, I, I guess, maybe slaves, but not uh, uh, black slaves. But I did have a black cousin who died a, a few years ago, actually. Um, half black half black half italian uh which was probably and and gay <laughs> that was probably a hard combination growing up um damn he's he would have been probably in his early 50s so anyway um so just want to make that that point um i understand how you know, when I was a kid, I remember eighth grade when we studied slavery and how horrible and and how that affected me as well. But, you know, the reality is that nobody that exists today was on either side. So... Black Lives Matter claims to fight for ethnic minorities, but if you're an ethnic minority that disagrees with them, suddenly you're just another dirty cracker to them. In fact, the second someone with dark skin disagrees with them, they're one of three things. An Uncle Tom, a house nigger, or a coon, because they dared to think for themselves. I'm brown, but my skin is dark as hell, and I've seen Black Lives Matter supporters completely turn on me just for disagreeing with them, to the point of threatening violence. If you're a minority with a stereotype that you're violent, if you want people to listen to your cause, don't become fucking violent when someone disagrees with you, dude. It's open season on killing white people and cops. It's gotten so bad that people are now advocating for POC-only safe spaces free of white people. Huh, yeah, in other words, fucking segregation. Instead of promoting diversity and unity, 
BLM is promoting the segregation of ethnic minorities from white people because white people are just too much for our feeble minds and our dark skin to handle. Everything this man fought for is being flushed down the fucking drain because people are too scared to speak out while BLM becomes more and more violent day by day. Now that we got that out of the way, what has Black Lives Matter accomplished in recent years? Racial fucking tension, dude. The amount of racial tension is way too damn high, and it really shouldn't be surprising that while BLM moves back to segregation, they move the rest of the country back with them to a simpler time when everybody hated everybody. How joyful, dude. I mean, when MLK was marching up and down the streets advocating for non-violence and peace between all colors of people, did anyone who claimed to be liberal at the time ever think that years later, the sides would be entirely swapped? The entire point of the civil rights movement was to integrate the races and abolish the racial stigma they said white mixed with white and colored mixed with colored. King said, fuck that, and now we have privileged suburban kids or overly emotional young adults tweeting about dead cops and safe spaces for people of color so that they don't mix with the evil white people. And don't get me started about the lies, dude. The entire premise of BLM is that our justice system doesn't think Black Lives Matter. But for a movement that calls itself Black Lives Matter, you'd expect at least a little bit of attention on a single biggest killer of young black people, other black people. Oh, so you care about black lives? Then why aren't you talking about black on black crime? Black on black crime isn't a thing. 84% of white murder victims were killed by another white person. You don't find it unsettling at all that despite black people being outnumbered five times over by white people, they're still murdered at a higher rate by their own people? Why doesn't Black Lives Matter focus on the culture of ghettos and make it appear to otherwise intelligent black men that their only avenues are drugs or ball? Cut the street to the short stop. Either you're slinging crack rock or you got a wicked jump shot. Yes, you heard me right. Why would a black man in a ghetto spend eight years getting a master's degree and paying for the education when they can sell dope on the streets and make a six dollar figure? The culture in ghettos where many black people are located doesn't encourage black men to pursue something that won't get them shot, yet Black Lives Matter doesn't care, dude. It's open season on a motherfucking cracker in this bitch. Let's get it. Not to mention, some of the martyrs of Black Lives Matter were subdued in every justifiable way. Michael Brown, one of the largest figures in the community after his death was politicized, was a thug who had robbed a convenience store before he was subdued and when the cops shot him, he was charging towards them and they had every justifiable right to shoot. Yet to this day, we see BLM supporters chanting, hands up, don't shoot, the supposed words and actions of Michael Brown, yet there is absolutely no credible witness or evidence that Brown had his hands up or even said these words. And now we reach the pinnacle. BLM wants everybody to care about their social movement, yet they don't give a shit about other social movements, dude. Recently, the annual gay pride parade in my city, Toronto, was crashed by Black Lives Matter to parrot their own anti-cop agenda. BLM also crashed an unveiling of a pride mural in Toronto after the Orlando shooting because it was being held by a police chief. Blair said it best, if it's not about them, it can't be talked about, dude. It's gotten so bad that some BLM supporters are actually advocating to abolish the police force, the very force that maintains law and order. We need to abolish the police, period. And this abolish the police. the police. These people will enter politics. I totally uh, agree with that. So as people know, I have my Facebook page and the government police. Now, obviously, those people and this guy right here don't think about other ways. They don't think outside the box that just because there's no police doesn't mean that there wouldn't be alternatives like the Detroit Threat Management Center. Uh, as I had mentioned, Dale Brown is going to uh, do a weekly show starting in September and he'll be on next week. He's been on before. So he'll be able to explain for people who don't know about the Detroit Threat Management Center. Um, and you can look up, look them up. They have a Facebook page. You'll see another side to not policing because they're not police, but protection and keeping people safe and managing threats with the least amount of damage to the person that is uh, the threat. 
meaning uh, they've never killed anybody as far as I know. And no one's ever gotten killed that they were protecting. So the problem is that people tend to get brainwashed and used to things and these are how things are and don't think about alternatives and don't think outside the box. So, but yeah, I do totally agree with that. (laughs) That statement that we need to get rid of police. One day. They will run for president one day, dude. Yet we continue to give them a free pass when they advocate for fucking chaos and for people to be murdered based on the color of their skin. And this idea that we all need to listen to minorities even when they're spouting violence and terrorism. This is what's opened us up to Islamic terrorism as well. I'm tired of the motherfucking jacket. Really, I used to be a big supporter of Black Lives Matter, but the facts simply contradict what's been told. BLM's martyr, Michael Brown, was justifiably shot in every single way. Black Lives Matter couldn't give a shit about black people killing other black people. If it's not about them, they'll go ahead and hijack it. And now, some even want to completely erase the progress Martin Luther King made by creating segregated spaces for blacks, browns, and latinos, dude. Colored schools, colored bathrooms, colored fountains, all separate from the whites, bringing us back to a darker time. And I'll say it one more time, black lives matter, but black lives matter doesn't. Black lives matter is trash. On a list of things that I hate, Black Lives Matter definitely might be beating out the band Nickelback at this point, and that's truly saying something. So for context, this next video is of a vigil that's being held for the people slain in the Orlando nightclub shooting put on by a local LGBT group, and it's completely derailed by someone from Black Lives Matter who decides to use the opportunity to hijack the microphone, make it all about her, and push her own ideology. If you're anything like me, this video is really going to piss you off, so watch at your own discretion, but here we go. I was really nervous to get up here because there's a lot of white people in the crowd. (laughs) And that wasn't a joke. (laughs) Your life's a joke. It's kind of funny that this girl takes the mic at a vigil for people slain by a Middle Eastern person to talk about how she's afraid of white people. I... Yeah. I wish this many people came out to our racial demonstrations and our Black Lives Matter movements. So do you not understand the difference between a racial demonstration and a vigil? Those people are there to mourn the lives lost in a senseless murder. Who the fuck raised you to think you can get on stage and do this shit? And newsflash, no one shows up to your racial demonstrations because they're stupid. Can anyone point me to one thing that Black Lives Matter has accomplished since its birth that has helped race relations? I'll wait. Nothing. Well, I, I, I don't want to stand up here and be angry because this isn't, this isn't for me. Yeah, you're totally not trying to make it all about you except for, you know, derailing the entire event to push your own ideology. Uh, but I thought I'd take the moment to just like list out some facts that many of you probably don't know. Um, because you're white. Does this qualify as black blaming? This kind of goes without saying, but can anyone else imagine if the roles were reversed and it was a white person on stage talking about how the audience doesn't know certain things because they're black? No one else could get away with that sort of blatant racism. But Blair, reverse racism isn't real. Yeah, I know, it's just racism. I'm tired of the black and white dichotomy that happens every time we talk about race or anything that goes on in our country. Do you have no self-awareness? You are directly contributing to that dichotomy. You hijack the stage just to push this stupid white versus black bullshit. Projection, the name is Black Lives Matter Girl with Undercut. Side note, why do all of the worst people in the world seem to all have undercuts? And I, as much as it is awesome that there's so many people here today, but it's like, who are you really here for? You're really asking who they're there for? Hmm, I don't know, maybe the 50 dead people whose graves you're basically spitting on. The fact that people were clapping for her is honestly depressing. This video was the Oppression Olympics played out in real life. It's the direct result of intersectionality and creating this progressive stack of victimhood. This girl who's so infatuated with victimhood saw a situation with 50 real victims and had to make it all about herself and somehow be the victim. 
Fuck Black Lives Matter. They've accomplished nothing. To anyone who's going to defend them in the comments, again, please enlighten me on one thing that they've done to progress race relations because all I see is a whole lot of fucking regression. All I'm seeing is stuff like this. If you do not listen to her, no, no. your event will be shut down right now. We are trying to be reasonable. We are trying to be reasonable. We are we are trying. We're gonna give you. We're gonna let you on the mic. We are gonna give you the mic. We will after Senator Sanders. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host Dave Bourne. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in. Username: Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back. Not the, uh, I'm trying to think of the word here that's escaping me. My favorite show to do, or the most positive show to do, but I think it's something that needs to be talked about. And I have talked about it before. Um, but not really breaking it down and to the extent that I want to tonight. And I really want people to understand where I'm coming from with this because most people that have issues with Black Lives Matter, uh, it's for a totally different reason. When it comes to the police side of it, I, assuming for the people that are against the police, and they claim that they're not against the police, so, but I, there are some people that are, that are part of Black Lives Matter, and I think that's a good thing. So, and when I say against the police, I don't mean like against them, like want to go fight them or something. I'm just saying that, like, I, I don't believe that there should be government police. I've made that clear a whole bunch of times tonight. So I don't have an issue with Black Lives Matter in that sense at all. What I do have an issue with is among other things, because there's some other information that uh, came out with the websites and who's funding them and who's really behind them, but is their agenda and how their agenda, because it really has nothing to do with race on my part, nothing. My goal is when it comes to police at, at least and my goal in general is to stop government oppression to maximize freedom real freedom true freedom in any way that we can not any way i mean not if it hurts um people physically or by robbing people or something like that but with you know with the exception of, of that, that is my goal. And when it comes to police, the goal is to end police and have a private solution. It is not to end police and not replace them with something. So let me make that clear for the 50th time for people that are sitting there saying, well, without police, you'd be whatever. And and for one, I can protect myself, okay? Um, I'm not worried about that at all. I'm really not. And when it comes to other people, that's where there's other options, 
And of course, like I was saying yesterday, you know, I don't have all the answers. I have some ideas. I have ideas based off of other people's ideas that I think are good that we can build off of or we can improve. So it's about people coming together to find alternatives. But I think it's been proven over and over again the same way that you can't change the system through the system is the same thing with the police, that police are not going to change. Nothing is going to change. They have to go away. <laughs> and when I say go away, I always have to say this. I don't mean die. I don't mean be in exile. I mean, go get another job that police departments have to be eliminated. Government money should no longer go to protection. It should not be a a function of government. So that would be the best way to put it. That protection, safety, um, keeping people safe, should not be a function of government. And it is all too much. At least within, we'll say, because I don't want to even start talking about the military and all of that, because that's a whole nother issue. But at least in terms of locally, we'll put it that way. I'm not including other countries and things like that, although I think people could protect themselves fine against other countries as well if they were allowed to get whatever they want and there were no restrictions. I also believe that the only way that government could or, – or the only way that you could have a checks and balance on government and a separation of power is if the people – had enough weapons and power um, enough uh, power when it came to weapons. I can't think of another word right now. Um, That would be the only way that you'd have a check and balance and a separation of power. And One of the things that I really want to stress to everybody before I get into this is that my ideal situation or situations are settled because people have weapons, but not because they use them. So, and I use the Bundy Ranch as an example, even though later some people got arrested. But I believe, like I was saying of the checks and balances, that the government doesn't overstep their bounds in a situation like that because they don't want to go to war with the people because they would have to. And people would be able in that situation to do just as much damage as the government. And hopefully the the people in general, I was going to say the people in charge, but I don't know that you'd have people in charge. It would more be a kind of collective, I don't know exactly how that would work, but whether it would be similar to a military or not, I guess that's something we'd have to figure out. But the ideal situation would be that, like nuclear war, that we know, and I'm saying we in the terms of 
talking like I'm the government saying, we know that you have nuclear weapons and you know that we have nuclear weapons, so we're not going to go to war because then we're all going to die. So we're not going to infringe on you. You're not going to infringe on us. There you go. It doesn't always work perfectly. Sometimes things happen and then you figure out how to deal with them depending on what they are. But that whole idea of nuclear weapons, people have nuclear weapons so they don't have to use them. If you've noticed, the United States has not gone gone to war with a country that's had nuclear weapons ever, at least directly. There's always the covert stuff. And that's where I think if you had a U.S. government and you had a check and balance on the people side, that they would be doing everything they could to get the advantage and destroy the people's army or the people's weapons or whatever you want to call it. And that's where that wouldn't work. But that's the only possible scenario I see government maybe working, but I don't because of what I just said. So, and of course, they wouldn't be dropping nuclear bombs in their own country. So you wouldn't, the people wouldn't need to have that level of, uh, firepower, they would just need an army level of, of firepower uh, as far as boots on the ground. But but that's what I mean when I talk about those types of things. And the same thing with people having the right to own guns. What the police did in Watertown, Massachusetts, I don't know that they would do in Las Vegas. And that makes me go back and I was thinking during the break about what I had talked about earlier with uh, Corinne Gaines and essentially the police breaking in her house and her trying to defend herself. I don't know. I I shouldn't talk anymore about that until I have more information. But so I don't think that would happen here because there's a lot more people in Las Vegas or at least in, in Clark County, Nevada, that have guns than in Watertown, Massachusetts. If you have a gun in Watertown, Massachusetts, it's more likely that that gun's illegal than legal. Yeah, it's just my opinion. Because it's not easy to get a gun in Massachusetts. And then I had read that story yesterday. It's gotten even harder. Um, to have, well, not to get one, but to get one that you can actually do something with that actually is useful. So what are you going to do when <laughs> you got people at your door with automatic M16s and you got, you know, a one shot you know, Derringer or something, or you got a, one of those uh, bolt action rifles. It, it's not going to help you too much, but I just wanted to be clear on that when it came to weapons and, and violence that Weapons are more, in my opinion, a deterrence for violence is the best scenario. Now, I know that you pull out a gun, you got to be prepared to use it at the same time. But you hope that you don't have to. And most gun owners know that. That's the difference between 
people that illegally own guns that, well, the law doesn't even matter, but people that, uh, it's hard to explain, that are responsible when it comes to guns and people that aren't. The responsible people, just like people that can fight, like how they don't brag about it or they don't really want to fight. It's it's almost the same concept. But regarding Black Lives Matter, um, there's a bunch of things that I want to go through. And I started to get into it that my goal is... And, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to ever happen, but it is to get rid of government police or police as we know it, to get rid of the government. uh, How did I phrase it earlier? Providing for local protection. Now, again, that doesn't mean you don't have protection and safety and somebody providing that. That's where places like the Detroit Threat Management Center come in and their model, which I think is a great model, but that doesn't mean that there's not other models that are similar. I mean, their model is all based on safety and making sure that they keep people safe. They protect people but they do it without using lethal force and without hurting other people. And they're not police. They're not there. Their main goal and main focus is to protect the people in safety, not making sure that somebody goes to jail or collecting revenue or filling up, uh, you know, uh, meeting quotas. So, The issue with Black Lives Matter is that what they're doing and the government media is doing this, and I talked about about this part of it before, is they're taking away the focus from the issue. Now, I'm for all people being safe and all people being protected from the police and for all people or for nobody being oppressed by the government. And when, before Black Lives Matter, before it was called Black Lives Matter, and people were just protesting, and they had brought up this fucking ignorant thing, well, what about all the black people that are killing black people? That was when it was fucking stupid to bring that up, because there was no comparison. Because... You're talking about the police, the government killing people and protesting that compared to average citizens killing another citizen. And I hate the word citizen. So people killing people as opposed to the government killing people. Of course, that's something that you're going to protest over people killing people. You can't control what people do. It doesn't mean you don't care about their lives, but. You think, or most people think, even though I don't believe this, that if you protest what's going on with police killing people, that maybe you can make a change or a difference. If you got gangs killing gangs, you have a much less uh, chance of stopping that compared to getting the government to change because supposedly the government is made up of the people and the and you have a say in all that bullshit that people are starting to learn is bullshit. So when they didn't call themselves anything, they being the protesters, I thought that question was fucked up when they asked it. Of course, Fox News. Why don't they care about black people killing other black people? But when you change your name to Black Lives Matter, now you're changing everything because you're saying that it's not just about police anymore. When it was about police, you know, I supported that. Not that I don't support 
you know, I think everybody's li- life matters and whatnot. But what is the purpose of calling it Black Lives Matter? And what does that even mean? So they're saying, and this is where their argument kind of falls apart in a sense. But when it comes to police, and, and, and this is why they they probably called it Black Lives Matter, because when it comes to the police, it doesn't matter what race they kill. They always get away with it. So you can't say that, oh, obviously, I heard somebody today trying to say, well, they named a bunch of black people that were killed by police and saying that they all got off. Well, all the police that kill white people or um, Hispanic people, they all get off, too. Police get away with murder all the time. It's that has n- the fact that they get off has nothing to do with race. It doesn't because they all get off. Now, there's definitely racism there, and black people are um, targeted and harassed at a higher percentage. I mean, there, there's no doubt by the government in general. However, I can, I'll go to killed by police right now, and you have they list in order, and I'm sure they miss a couple, so more than a couple, but they might miss you know a couple per week, or there's ones that just dis- people that disappear because the police murder people and bury them in the desert. You know, you look at August 9th. Male, white, male, Latino, female, white, male, white, male, unknown, male, white. I mean, I just named the most recent, like, seven people. Two of them, it it doesn't, I I don't know. Um, It doesn't have the race. And everybody else was white or uh, Latino. So... This is and more white people are killed than black people because they're and it's a percentage thing. Like I said, percentage wise, more black people are killed because they only make up 13 percent of the population. They have 710 as of two days ago that have been killed by police. And it's about four per day on average. So that they know of. You know, then you probably got to add 10 percent more at the end of the year that were just murdered and disappeared or maybe even more than that, because I, I don't know what their process is. I know they find the articles each day. They search for um, they use the articles as evidence to show, OK, this person was killed this day. And that's how um, they use it as their reference. But I'm sure they could miss some not because anything they're not doing just because maybe an article didn't get run. Maybe, again, a cop killed somebody and nobody knew because they fucking buried the body. So you have a problem of police murdering people. Not only that, it is you have a problem of police harassing people, police beating people up. Um, police oppressing people, just how they treat them. If you get pulled over, most of the time police are assholes to whoever you are. Now, I think that it's more discrimination than racism that a lot of police, like police automatically think if somebody's black. And I I think other things factor into it like their age and how they're dressed and stuff like that as well but that they think oh if they're black they must be a criminal so when they pull them over I think they're more jumpy with most black people than other races and that might be part of it or you know there are 
police officers that are racist, but I think it's more discrimination and racism fact factors into an extent, but I would say discrimination would be the biggest thing that it's not that they hate black people, but also it might be racism in the fact that the type of person they pull, if they pull over somebody who they, they label ghetto or who's in the rap and, or something like that. And they're like, Oh, this little punk and they're an asshole to them because, but as far as wanting to kill them, I, I don't think, well, there was a cop who actually did want to kill somebody so he could get, you know, paid vacation. So uh, who knows when it comes to that as well. So racism obviously is there, but if there were no black people, the police would still kill just as many people. They just kill more white people. But again, it's not just murder. And what's happening is you have police getting away with all of these other things now because nobody gives a fuck if, like, I got uh, ripped out of a car, thrown on the ground, uh, kneed in the back, and had bruises all over me. And nobody gave a shit about that. And usually years ago, I thought, that's evidence to throw the case out. Nope, you're guilty of obstructing the investigation because you didn't get out of your car right when we asked you to. You actually asked why. It, it, it's insane. So we have all these other issues. It's not just killing. Killing is probably the smallest issue percentage-wise If you count interactions now, obviously it's the biggest issue because people are dying. And once somebody somebody's dead, you can't bring them back. So it's the biggest issue in that sense. But if you take the percentage of interactions, there's more interactions probably where people are harassed or there's also people that they plant drugs on them or arrest false arrest which happened to me as well where I was arrested for something that wasn't even a crime just because the officer didn't like me he said that to my fiance that he didn't like my demeanor so what you have black lives matter doing is they're focusing so much on racism as is government media which is allowing them to do it And really pushing that and turning this into the problem is racism. The problem with the police is racism. If there was no racism, then everything would be fine. And that is not the case. So every time people talk about problems with the police, they only talk about problems pertaining to black people and they pretty much only talk about murder killings so everything else it's like you know takes a back seat to that and that's not good because they're not focusing on the issue of Police having too much power. And that's really what it is. And that's why government should not be the ones to, or in any fashion, taxes should not go because if taxes go to government and then the government pays a private institution, that's even worse. So just to remind everybody of my definition of outsourcing and private outsourcing is the government taking, you still pay paying taxes, the government taking that money and paying it out to uh, hiring a private group outsourcing. uh, That's outsourcing. Private is when no money goes to the government. The people decide they go hire a company or hire a person or whatnot to do it. So, like, take garbage as an example, garbage collection. So 
they can have government employees collect garbage or they can outsource to a private company. And in one town in New Hampshire where uh, Mark from Free Talk Live lives, they actually have private garbage pickup where you can go out and pick the company. And what that does is you eliminate the monopoly, number one. So the police have a monopoly on force. They know that they're not going to get fired. Now, individuals might get fired, but as a whole, the police are not going to get fired. They're not going to eliminate the police station. Like, it's not like when you have a contract with a company that supplies you whatever, uh, soft drinks, and you switch from Coke to Pepsi. And you fire Coke. That can't happen. And they know that. They have no reason to do a better job, to provide better services. None. Because you can't get rid of them. And that's the whole thing right there. I mean, a major part of it. The other is that they have power that regular people don't. And nobody's focusing on this. They're just focusing on the racism part because of Black Lives Matter. That is my major problem with Black Lives Matter, initially at least. And if you look at Black Lives Matter, where it really started or when things really got um, built up was with Trayvon Martin. And that was a story that was manipulated by the media and then turned into an agenda because everything that happens is exploited by politicians. And this was no different. It went from this is racism and from a guy who wasn't even white. Well, he was half white, but he looked totally Peruvian. And it went from racism to Let's get rid of stand your ground laws. Let's get rid of guns. That's what was going on at the end of the Trayvon Martin case. And what people forget, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why they call it Black Lives Matter is because they can include Trayvon Martin because George Zimmerman was not a cop. So it seems like it's Black Lives Matter if it's police or white people that happen to kill black people. And that's it. But you can't call yourselves Black Lives Matter if that's what your your goal is. Now, what I think they're trying to do is by the by focusing on race and that being the main issue. So they're saying, you know, race is the main issue, we need to do something about race. That's where the agenda comes in and the exploitation comes in. And how does that come in? Well, Hillary Clinton has already said that there's certain things that are going to be federally um, that they're going to have federal standards on when it comes to the police, which will lead to federalizing the police, federalizing the police. I mentioned that to somebody today. And the first thing that came into their mind was the Nazis, because when you federalize the police, you have an occupying army within the country. Nobody's talking about that. They're talking about federalizing the police as a positive thing, which is fucked up because essentially what the police has been doing over the past 10 years, maybe a little less, has been all coming from the federal government, whether it's since 9-11, whether it's training, weapons, any of that stuff has all come from the federal government. So it's almost like the police are federalized already. It's just not official and it's not in a uh, way where 
they're all communicating and all connected. But once they do that, we're fucked. Not to say that we're not fucked already, because we are. And this is all goes back to the bullshit that Black Lives Matter is doing. At the same time, and and first of all, where are they getting all their money? Because they obviously have a lot of money. And, oh, before I get to that, the other thing that obvi- obviously the government wants to do is the divide and conquer. So instead of all of the black people that are against the police or want to reform the police or get, get rid of them or whatever, um, could unite with all races. They want a reason to divide people. Like in one of those clips, it was, you know, police, we need to kill police and white people. I I don't know if he said kill, but. But. It's. It divides people at the same time. So instead of people getting together against the government, it's a benefit to the government because it separates people. They always want to classify people put them into groups and separate them because it's better, it's beneficial to the government because then the government is able to separate people and have them fighting amongst each other instead of getting together and unifying against the government. And I don't mean against the government, like having a government takeover But it might be unifying on specific issues or specific things. So the other thing that I had found out recently that Black Lives Matter is doing and they I don't know if the people know it or not, because I'm sure there's a lot of just normal people that might not consider themselves part of Black Lives Matter, but, you know, march and protest and do things like that, that you have these communist websites, these communist revolutionary web websites. And if you look at the event page for, on Facebook on um, any of our... Uh, social media pages, nonpartisan liberty for all and the government police, you'll see, and it's actually in the name. Um, let me look one up. You'll, you'll see below the signs, like on the one, if you can find the event, if you go to Facebook slash, um, nonpartisan liberty for all, you should be able to find the event. And there's one in the back that says guilty. And then under it, it's like psweb.org or something. It's a communist website. The name that I named it, the revcom.us, that came from if you go to the event and open it, there's a picture of a rally and people are holding the sign. They're actually holding the... um, this big sign that says black lives matter. If you click on discussion and it has a little website under it and it's rev.us. And if you open that website, it's a totally communist. It, it talks about com, uh, com, uh, <laughs> communist revolution and all of that. So if you're in the event, click on discussion. I I posted there uh, a couple pictures. One of them says Black Lives Matter. There's both a, a black woman and a white woman holding this sign. 
under it, it says revcom.us. Then under that, Justice Mike Brown, there's a truck. It says Ferguson is everywhere. Under it, same thing, revcom.us. Now, what I believe is that the same thing with these other movements that they have essentially been hijacked, that these movements, you know, start as whatever and political operatives get involved or people that serve as political operatives, like people that put money into politics, people that secretly really run things, the powers that be pulling the strings. I mean, they don't give the money directly. They give it to this person who gives it to that person who gives it to this person. And they pull the strings and watch things unfold. And half of it, I think, they just do to fuck around and do for fun, really. Like, our lives are like a fucking soap opera for them to uh, play with to an extent. But... If you look at this fucking website, I mean, it's it's some scary shit. So I'll bring it up. Um, I, I had looked at it earlier. So it's Rev. Um, or Revcom. Let me. I'll probably be flagged as like some communist. It's Revcom.us. The fact that it's a .us... Is And it says, welcome to the revolution, the voice of the revolutionary communist party, USA. So it actually has, um, I guess they have a magazine, read revolution newspaper today. And it, and it has, and I think this is an insult to her, but it has, um, current gains on it. And she was far from a communist. You could tell by the stuff that she was saying and obviously with the license plate and all of that. But it it has all of this stuff in there as well. But I don't I don't know why. I, I don't know if that's how they're getting people into it or what, because to me. It's more of I see being anti-police as being freedom, uh, pro-freedom, because if you're a communist, it, it doesn't go it doesn't go together, because if you're a communist, you want more police, you want more laws, you want more control. So you have all these people out there that are promoting communist shit probably being brainwashed, some of them probably not even knowing that they're involved in it. But communism is more government control. Not to mention a bunch of murderers. If you look at the history of all the communist leaders, but this is definitely a... um, And, of course, where does the site come from? RCP Publications. And it has a box, Merchandise Mart, Chicago, Illinois. Then there's the other site that is, if you look at the event, the first event page, you can see it in the back there. It's, uh, I think it's pslweb.org. I looked at it. I looked it up already, but it's hard for me to see it right now. PSLweb.org. So I wonder how many of, and it's the Party for Socialism and Liberation. So, same thing. Vote Socialist in 2016. Newspaper for the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Liberation Radio. Now, do these people know what they're promoting or not? Here's a, um, how long is this? Because I'll play it real quick. Let's see what the, I usually don't do stuff on the fly like this, but we will. 
So let me unmute my, I mute everything because I'm a perfectionist and I don't want background noises coming out of my computer. So I mute the websites too, but we'll unmute this for a minute. It's a minute and 47 seconds. Oops, let me. Now I'm in the middle of Actually, suing you guys okay. in ECI, so and they came and took my. I'm in the so, middle of suing you guys okay. in ECI, and they came and took oh, my, this is off of my car. Off my car. My car was properly properly insured. Who's ECI? That's it's, the that's uh, uh, Eastern Correctional Institute. Oh, okay, sorry about that. I'm playing a couple things at once. That was actually uh, current gains. Which again, I'm sure she's not a communist, and they didn't. What she didn't certain? mention anything about uh, Black Lives Matter. So here's the from the uh, PSL website. What is socialism? Join the PSL. Socialism. Actually, there is not one answer because there are so many definitions of socialism. Oh, so wait, I want to tell you. They're going to the say PSL. what is socialism? They want to tell you it's the version that doesn't control your life and kill uh, millions of people. So we'll let we'll let them do that. Real socialism. Quick. Socialism. Actually, there is not one answer because there are so many definitions of socialism. So I want to tell you what the PSL. PSL. PSL means by socialism. It means working people taking control and ownership over the factories, mines, transportation, media and communication, and service sector enterprises. Instead of the capitalists owning and controlling the profits from enterprises, the profits would belong to the public. The public. The public. And be used to guarantee every person a right to a job at a decent wage. Under a socialist economy, the profits will be used to fund free health care coverage for every human being. The profits would be used to finance free education through higher education and to provide affordable housing for all. For all. For all. As a first step, socialism would mean the nationalization of the big banks. All interest payments to banks for home mortgages and student debt would be declared null and void. Health care insurance companies would be eliminated. Yeah, and, and that's nice and everything. Uh, you know, everything's free. and But in reality... It's it's not like that. And how are you going to do that? So basically they want co-ops for everything. They want if you're if you own a business, you can't own a business anymore. Everybody who works there owns the business. So how do businesses get started in the first place? Number 1. And it's like saying, "Okay, I have I have a business that makes no money, but let's say I start making money with my radio show and, you know, I make, I don't know, say I start making a hundred thousand a year with my radio show. So I quit my full-time job that I have and I do my full-time, not my, just my show, but my network. And how do you take control of my radio show? Well, you have to do that by force, obviously. And who's going to enforce that you can't have a business? Who's going to enforce that there's no interest? Who's going to enforce that everybody has insurance and doctors only take a certain amount of money? Who do you think is going to enforce all that stuff? Well, the same with government. It's going to be enforced through the barrel of a gun, just like they did with the license plate on uh, current Gaines' car. Eliminated. 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 Socialism would end income taxes and most other taxes on the people. Can socialism be a democratic system? Well, or income taxes, be, they the should get rid of. The apologies for capitalism assert. Just a form of big government despotism. That depends on us, the people, the 99%. The 99%. In fact, we believe that socialism, that is, the public ownership of all the wealth-producing institutions of society, is the only basis for providing a real democracy. Real democracy means not simply the right to vote every four years for politicians who will oppress us, but the essential right to a job, free health care, free child care, and free education for all. For all. For all. Socialism means real democracy. Social rights. Economic rights. In addition to the right to free speech. Free assembly. And freedom of the press. Thousands of people support this effort. If you do too. Become a volunteer with the PSL. And most importantly, join the PSL. Yeah. So really what Black Lives Matter is, is a communist slash socialist organization. 
and they're trying to I don't know what they're trying to do if they're trying to build up the protest against the police and then start to focus in another direction or once they federalize the police then they start to focus on they take the people that are in those same groups and try to push them over to communism or i i don't know what their plan is but that is definitely the plan of the country or world government or whatever is they've been moving towards communism and socialism for a long time and it's controlling every aspect of your life is what it is so we're going to take a quick break when we come back we'll talk a little more about black lives matter and then we'll go into the list of demands as well as I want to talk a little about the the history and how it kind of started because it, it came out of nowhere um, as well. And, of course, your calls are welcome, even though no one ever calls in. 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or you can Skype in, uh, username, nonpartisan, liberty for all. Just send in your uh, uh, a uh request with your name and your uh what you want to talk about and we will get you on so we'll be right back after this nonpartisan liberty for all check us out at nonpartisan liberty for all dot com <laughs> Well, I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. We've seen the Black Lives Matter movement in the news lately, more so than ever the past week, um, in relation to the deaths of Philander Castile and Alton Sterling at the hands of police officers. Now, before we get into the specifics of police shootings and these deaths, I want to play you the president's response to these killings. Take a look. When incidents like this occur, there's a big chunk of our fellow citizenry that feels uh, as if because of the color of their skin, they are not being treated the same. And that hurts. And that should trouble all of us. Now, unlike the liberal opportunistic freaks on the left and the neo-Nazis on the right, we actually care about all lives. We care about black people getting shot and killed unjustly in this country, of course. And I hate to see cases like this, but we heard our president use a very troubling narrative. He's race baiting. He's, he's inciting more violence by using the narrative that he is and making this a race issue, making this, making this a one-sided problem and fueling the anger. Now, I want to take you to my second clip. It's of the Dallas shooting this happening last night where five police officers were killed take a look at this footage horrific footage where a sniper actually gunned down five police officers that were attending to a protest scene. And the troubling issue here is that we're seeing a push now for the federalization of all local police officers in this country. And I want to take you to my third clip. It's a clip of a local sheriff. He told Megyn Kelly that he thinks that federalization of the Chicago police um, is in order because they're causing a murder crisis. Take a listen to what he has to say. 
I'm trying to figure out why a state of emergency hasn't been declared in parts of city of Chicago, why there's no curfew in place from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. The first thing they need to do is stem the violence at nighttime. Somehow they have to stop the bleeding, but Rahm Emanuel seems incapable uh, of doing this. I just need to know how many more black people have to be shot and killed, like uh, Director Comey said, before somebody thinks that this is an emergency. Now, Sheriff Clark isn't alone in calling for martial law in cities, which aligns with the narrative that we should federalize, nationalize our police force. Al Sharpton has the same sentiment. I brought his clip for you. Take a look at what he says. There must be national policy and national law on policing. We can't go from state to state. We've got to have national law to protect people against these continued questions. We hear Al Sharpton akinning the national policing legislation to the Civil Rights Act, and he says there must be a national policy, a national law on policing. We can't go from state to state. We can't trust states with their own laws and regulations. We need to federalize this. We need to, we need to step this up and take control of it. Now, that's in line with what the president is trying to do. He's picked six cities to have nationalized police forces. This is his pilot program. Five million of U.S. taxpayer money has been, has been used to do this. It was launched by Eric Holder um, so that the DOJ could bring police departments under federal control. Now, the call to nationalize our police force and institute martial law in cities to protect citizens from their own police officers, that falls in line with hacked messages of the Black Lives Matter leader, um, who these messages actually reveal that the administration has a plan for a summer of chaos and even martial law. I want to read you some of these hacked messages. And on Friday, June the 10th, someone hacked into the Twitter of account of hashtag Black Lives Matter, the leader and former Baltimore mayoral candidate, DeRay McKesson. And this is what was leaked, according to this one document, this interaction where the attorney general, um, it's, it's alleged that the attorney general is planning a summer of chaos to cause disruption at the conventions and ultimately institute martial law. Now, this exchange of messages between DeRay McKesson and a lady named Johnetta Elsie this is what the conversation included. J.E., have you spoken with Ms. Lynch, Attorney General, recently about the plan for summer and fall leading up to the elections? To which he replies, we spoke two weeks ago. They want us to start really pushing how racist Trump is now instead of waiting so that others can start getting the protests ready to shut both conventions down. Then the conversation continues. If we can get both conventions shut down for messing over Bernie and for having racist Trump, then get martial law declared so Obama can stay in office. We will win. Call you soon when I get to my dad's so I can have his landline and we can talk about this more. So the summer of chaos that they're speaking of, they go on to detail how they're busing people in to create riots. 2,000 people uh, bust in from different cities and another six to 8,000 expected to drive into Cleveland for the convention. They're hoping to cause such mass chaos that martial law has to be declared, possibly even not an election. Who knows? But at least Obama gets to stay in office, according to these leaked tweets between the two of them regarding our own U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Now, this goes hand in hand with the nationalized police force pilot program that's being instituted currently. And if martial law is declared, we might not even see an election. Well, a federal system of policing would be a good idea in theory if we could just ignore all the problems and elements associated with federal law enforcement lately. That aside for a moment, what we know from these tweets, from this leaked information, is that mass chaos is planned all through the summer, centered around the election, right up until the election. And if they can, they can manage to stop or halt it and declare this martial law as DHS has implemented the plan of nationalized police forces, they just might get away with it. Meanwhile, our president is making this a race issue, pointing out how police brutalize disproportionately black people. And this could be a front for pushing a nationalized police force and ultimately declaring martial law. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. People desperate for staples like milk, rice and flowers. If you work in law enforcement, I have a very important question for you, one which soon may be a matter of life or death. I'm sure some people become police officers just so they can boss other people around. But I'm going to assume here that you mean well, that you want to be one of the good guys. 
In which case, my question is this. Is there anything the politicians could enact into law that you wouldn't enforce? Promoting the ideas of true freedom and liberty, nonpartisan liberty for all radio with Dave Bourne. And we are back, nonpartisan liberty for all. And I guess I think the communist part comes in and what I'm saying is in their platform. So somebody has come up with this again, whatever political operatives or who knows who is really behind a lot of this. But they have a bunch of demands. None of them really seem to be about, well, not none of them, but this is, again, where taking something and then using it to turn it into something totally different and exploit it. So, one, I don't support the government doing anything for anybody, period. Um, so obviously when you come up with a platform that isn't about getting rid of things, laws, taxes, police, I'm not going to support it. And if you're just focusing on one race which is what is being done in here. And I wanted to get to some other things, but I didn't realize how big this was. Um, so there's a lot to talk about in their platform. So one of the things is reparations, and that alone is pretty big. So... Um, they demand reparations for past and continuing harms. Um, one of the biggest is free college, essentially, including living expenses for all black people, I think, for life. Um, forgiveness of all student loans. So any black people that and, and this is specific just to black people. So forgiveness of uh, student loans. And I wonder who, again, who is really behind all this shit is what you think about. Because it goes from the exploitation of what's going on with the police. And as I was explaining Instead of focusing on the issue of police, tur turning it into totally a racial issue, which, as I said, I, I don't think that there isn't um, racism involved at, at all. Like, it, there's definitely um, some racism involved, but they turned it into it's not a police issue. It's more of a, you know, it's just totally now a racial issue and they don't even talk about the power of the police or any of that stuff anymore. Um, and I wanted to go back into the history, but I've talked about it before and I don't think I'm going to have enough time because this is just for anybody to ask for this. And as I had mentioned before, the majority, first of all, the majority of people going to school and that have student loans didn't experience the type of discrimination that older, a lot older, and of course, people that aren't alive anymore did. Um, so I'm not for the government for doing any of this shit, but it's the reparations include uh, free and full access for all black people. Wait, let me click on that. Reparations for the syst systematic denial of access to high quality educational opportunities in the form and 
full and free access for all black people, including undocumented, currently and formerly incarcerated people, and to lifetime education, including free access and open admission to all public universities and colleges, but you know all types of schools. I think it's to release everyone from jail. Now, I would release everyone from jail that is in there for drugs. Now, however, I would release all races, not just black people. And I wonder at what point you think about how many years has this been in the making? Because as I always talk about is the end game of government. And to me, when a government starts, it already has its end game. And that's to control every aspect of your life. Now, how this fits in is it's definitely a communist platform. So the first is to end the war on black people. I don't believe there's a war on black people. Um, I believe that there is discrimination within the injustice system. Um, But the injustice system is all fucked up and totally needs to be re-engineered because it's the whole government needs to be re-engineered but that would be basically just ending government as far as I'm concerned and having an organized society but I would say that if anybody see this is where the shit doesn't fit as well as the oppression on black people has come from government because people themselves aren't able, even during slavery, it was government who allowed people to have slaves and returned them and backed all that up. So it's always been government who's been the most oppressive. So to turn to government and want more laws and want more from government does not make sense. But you have these communist groups now coming in to Black Lives Matter to turn it into a whole movement that goes beyond the police. So they use that At the beginning, just like I said earlier, with Trayvon Martin, it went from racism to going after guns and self-defense laws. That that's what it what it was. And it wasn't even a cop. And he wasn't even white. Half white. So if he's not white, and and like I said, he's a guy who, he's not a guy, George Zimmerman, if you see the picture of him when it first happened, he looked totally like fucking Hispanic. He had, he he was bald um, or had really short hair, had a goatee. Um, He looked totally Hispanic. So that's like calling Barack Obama white. It, it is. Um, and they totally twisted that story um, and then turned it into an attack on self-defense laws and guns. But as I was saying that how they twisted it was an issue of racism, now it's this. And that's kind of here And this is definitely a socialist agenda. Um, So to end the war on black people and and to the criminalization and dehumanization of all black youth across areas of society. Well, okay, what across uh, our nation's justice and educational system, social service agencies, media and pop culture. 
this is really, if you look at that and in that line in media and pop culture, first of all, if you look at media now, um, they're helping Black Lives Matter, the government media. So, which is all media, even Fox helps because they're the the other side of it. They keep it going. So I noticed that a long time ago, just like the Democrats and the Republicans keep each other going and can argue with each other. That's exactly what they did is they were the other side to the government media side. They are government media as well, but they were the other side to the, say, uh, pro or not pro racist, but racism side. And then they were the pro racism side. I mean, whatever they'd say on the other channels, they'd refute it on there. Like they would be, they were the ones who, who said, well, what about all the killings in Chicago when they came out in, uh, initially and protested the police? And I was like, what the fuck? But they kept it going to go back and forth and then to capital punishment. Um, of course, I have no problem with that. And then to, to money bail. See, are they saying, which I believe they are, that all of these things – are and to say that the these things do not affect everybody is just bullshit. Now, there's things that affect black people more. And it, there there is. And I would say that it's harder for black people to make it than white people in society but not hard enough where especially these days where anything needs to be done to help because you're black but I do think it's a little harder because racism does exist but it depends on who you are too I mean you're going to tell me it's harder for uh, Ice Cube's son, I was just thinking of that because straight out of Compton's been on, then for me to be successful, it, who do you think is in a better situation? I grew up, my father drove a cab. And um, I'm half Jewish. I don't know what that means, but his side of the family was Jewish and they were poor Jews. So I never had anything, and this is not about me or about anybody specifically. Um, I'm just trying to, oh, did I get off the website? I need to get back to that. Oh, no, I didn't. I'm just trying to, to use it as an example that what about all the Latinos do they get these things too? What about Asians? I mean, this is 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 this meant to be ridiculous? So again, uh, some of these things if you want to apply them for everybody, but anything that involves government, no. But end to capital punishment, of course. And to the use of past criminal history to determine eligibility for housing, education, licenses. Do they use criminal history for voting or licenses? Or, or Well, yeah, felonies. No, that's not right. Um, so, no, I agree with that. Loans, um, employment, or other services and needs. Um, you know... If it's only for black people, then no. <laughs> but I, I think it's really up to the business to decide what they want to do. However, you know, I think a lot of that is unfair because you um, 
people get arrested for stupid shit and then that's on your record and whatever or things you did 20 years ago. I, I can't I don't have enough time to go through everything. So let me just skim through some of this. And um, there's end to bail money. That should be I mean, I'm fine with that, too. But it's end the bail money for black people, I guess. So it's saying low-income people spend more money in a cage before going to court, and that's true. And bail is re- ridiculous, um, especially in, in Nevada. And it's a whole cro- crooked system with the bail bondsmen. So, yeah, bail is fucked up. No, that's good point. But if you can't say, well, if you're black, you know, no bail, um, if you're any other race or if you're black, yeah, you don't have to pay any bail, but other races do. So, um, and to privatization of police, there's not privatization of police. There is a prisons and, and see, yeah, I mean, privatization is not privatization and it's outsourcing. What they're doing now is outsourcing. They're using uh, government money and outsourcing, and that is worse than privatization. Privatization is when people use their own money, and that's not what's happening. So they're, that's a wrong description. Um, the, the, okay, so they do address law enforcement, uh, demilitarization of law enforcement, so I definitely agree with that, but the I love how everything's a war. So they have for their platform there's end the war on black people, which has a you know whole bunch of things. Some of them I agree with as long as they apply to everybody. And some of them I don't. And they talk about an end to jails. Um, There's definitely, I have a real problem with prisons. I don't know exactly what you do, but I think first you'd get rid of a lot of these crimes if you go to a it's not a crime if there isn't a victim and you can do whatever you want as long as you don't harm anybody else, then you won't have many people in jail. But right now it's a jail culture and they're just throwing people uh, in jail. And it talks about gay and transgender people, but only black gay and transgender people and mass surveillance on black communities like we don't I don't have helicopters flying over my house or my phones aren't being monitored or um you know it's in a way I mean you could look at this as is racist but part of this cuz it's to say well only we're being um ba- b- bad things uh, only we're being attacked by society or only bad things are happening to us but everybody else their life is perfect but that first part because it it kind of goes back into the to the end the war on black people it kind of goes to some totally communist stuff or totally controlling stuff to some stuff that actually promotes freedom it's it's kind of all over the place because, you know, talking about dehumanization of black youth and then mentioning media and pop culture. And in that, they talk about, you know, arrest of students and the removal by police. I mean, that's crazy. Anyway, um, that's definitely, you know, I've talked about police and schools and that is a ridiculous thing. So. But let me get to the other parts of the platform. There's the reparations, which 
free school. Everybody deserves a living wage. That's where a lot of this gets more, um, you know, to government, you know, with reparations, paying off student loans, uh, guaranteed minimum livable income, corporate and government reparations, like other people weren't fucked over on their homes and stuff like that. So, and I would have read through this in more detail. I, I didn't actually find out about it till today. I didn't know they had the, or how long this has been out for. Invest, divest is part of it. Um, a relocation of funds at the federal, state, and local level from policing and incar- incarceration. Well, yeah. But I'd say get rid of taxes altogether. Expungement of all drug related offenses. And they should definitely, um, you know, some of the stuff. is stuff, uh, you know, again, I agree with, but some of it goes to a whole nother level. It goes back to fully funded education, which, of course, I don't believe in. And I I don't see a, you know, I, I do see racism as something that does exist, but I don't see a war on black people. I'm sorry, I, I don't. I I did. Um, there was in the past, definitely. But I don't see a war on black people at all. If anything, um, I think a lot of people, not everybody, but I think some people go the opposite. They go out of their way to... Um, you know, f- to try to show that they, you know, like they feel guilty or t- something like that. Um, but you know, there's some racism. You can't legislate people's opinions, and government really shouldn't have anything to do with this, except for all the things that have to do with getting rid of the criminalization of this and that and uh, all of those things, getting rid of uh, a lot of these laws for everybody, legalizing drugs, um, capital punishment was one of the things, letting everybody out of jail that's in there for drug offenses, Community control is another one on the platform. It says direct democratic control of local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. I don't know what that really means. Ensuring that communities most harmed by destructive policing have the power to hire. And how do you say end the police altogether and to privatization of education that's fucked up so they want to get rid of private schools so to force you into that's I'll have to go really go through this in detail and look for the those hidden uh those hidden things that you can tell why they're in there and who put them in there, which things like that are part of the agendas of the powers that be and to the privatization of education. And that that's saying that you can't have a private school so why would you want to do that? How does that affect the black community? 
Is it to say, well, black people can't afford to go to private schools? Well, that's not true. I mean, this whole – and first of all, how many people are even in Black Lives Matter or part of it? It seems like it's a small percentage of people that agree with Black Lives Matter anyway. Now, usually that small percentage of just people in general end up being the ones that run politics in places. But, oh, okay, it does have the authors and contributors. So I'll have to look them up. We'll have to do a show on this, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, demands because that that will take up a, a whole show and then I can really get into some of the hidden agenda or agendas in there but uh, yeah that's there are some uh, some crazy stuff in there and like that like that's uh to say that you can't have a private school does that also mean that you can't homeschool um now on the other side th- this means nothing um meaning that this is uh, a bunch of documents on a website that a group that's obviously well funded that came out of nowhere because again there are you know there are definitely billionaires that are involved in this there are people that are trying to uh exploit what's going on to push a political agenda it's obvious um that doesn't even have to be said but who are those people and what exactly is their agenda? Well, if the end game being control, of course, you know, you look for the things. That and this being tied to communism definitely at the top level it is so again you you have a lot of just normal people and i think this is a majority of black lives matter that you know just they don't want to see people getting killed by police and they go to protest and they peacefully protest and whether they're down with all the other stuff is another uh, question altogether. I want to play this thing from the Democratic National Convention because I think this was really fucked up and they had mothers uh, of Black Lives Matter, but at the same time, there were a whole bunch of other people that were killed by police as well that were ignored. And this was at the Democratic National Convention. Um, So, well, it's like 10 minutes long. Actually, we don't need to do that. Um, Let me see if I have anything else that we can play out. Um, Okay, I have one more thing to play I don't know. I think this is negative towards Black Lives Matter and that I didn't agree with a lot of it, but I'll play this and then we'll uh, wrap up the show. Shut it down! 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 Shut it
I know why I played this because there's some douchebag that comes on that starts yelling out like stupid shit. So this was just to show what an ass he was. slap in the face to law enforcement just days after an NYPD cop was killed in cold blood, who, by the way, was African-American. Hundreds descending upon the streets of midtown Manhattan to march against cops and even chant expletives for those who protect and serve and were protecting them on that day, too. Here now to discuss where we go from here, Fox News contributor and former homicide detective Rod Wheeler, who was out and got those sound bites for us and did all those interviews, and Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. Uh, since we spoke to you, Rod, earlier, let's get the sheriff to weigh in. Sheriff, your reaction to sheriff, some, of the, some of the sentiments you heard on the streets on Saturday. Well, it's just crazy talk. That's ignorance in its purest form. You know, I think we need to rethink the strategy. I don't know why the police even bother policing those uh, demonstrations. They're not protests. Those people advocate for the overthrow of our legally constituted <laughs> government. What hey, I would do is point, let them Sheriff. fend for them. Let them fend. Let them fend for themselves. Let the good law-abiding <clears throat> people of New York clash with them for disrupting their lives, disrupting their businesses. Then the police can show up and arrest these subhuman creeps for <laughs> creating a disturbance. That we can do. Now, Rod, do you have a different sense? You're actually on the street talking to them. Number one, did the cops play an important role in keeping them safe? And you, tell me about the sentiment you heard. They did, Brian. I mean, the cops were out there. You know, I must say that the police were taking a lot of verbal abuse while they were out there, and it was oh. really unfortunate. But I also must say that the police did not turn their backs on the citizens. And even the people that had the biggest mouths out there, the folks that I was talking to, if they were to call those police officers today, those same police officers would still be there to assess them. Look, Brian, it was just last week when a young New York police officer was gunned down in cold blood right here in this city where I'm at now. And you know what? This officer hasn't even been eulogized yet, and these people are out there talking about death to cops. So I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, but he wasn't and I targeted. Wish that the politicians would speak up a little bit more because actually, you know what I think? I think a lot of these protesters get their energy from some of these liberal politicians. And That's Sheriff, just my opinion. And Rod and Sheriff, I want to bring it to the president. I'll just paraphrase what he said. Essentially, he says this, these are people who are very very angry and they're standing up because this has been a wrong that has not been righted yet. Your right. reaction? But you know what, though, Brian, a lot of the people I talked to, I'm sorry, Sheriff, a lot of the people that I talked to, they were saying that their frustration, believe it or not, is with the government. And they specifically said, Brian, President Obama. So there you go. I mean, hopefully that is the case that the majority of the people, it is the government, but when you say government, different people take that in different ways. And 
and hopefully it's government meaning more freedom not less now i don't know that that's the case but who knows um that's all we have for today i hate to end the week on a i guess a downer of a show really um and really uh, my my goal as i said is to do what i can to preserve whatever um true freedom and liberty we have left and and we barely have any and it's going in a direction where at some point we're not going to have any and government's going to totally take over and when groups like this um are doing the things that they're doing and are hijacked to be exploited for a political agenda that is mostly socialists and communists, um, it's fucked up. It really is. And, you know, I will continue to speak out against the police and I will continue to support anybody that's oppressed by the government. As I said, my people are the people that stand for true freedom and liberty um, as far as their race or ethnicity or religion or whatever is irrelevant to me. I want all people to be free to choose to live their own life and to realize that they own themselves not this bullshit that's going on and if it it seems like especially with the connection to communism and definitely them being funded by somebody with deep pockets that they may be able to get some of these things passed and uh that's you know some of them are are honestly positive but i think it's more the negative that they're they're looking at and that they're going to focus on the ones that take more control over people's lives and or limit their freedom like having to go to public school or something like that and the federalization of the police and you'll have them to enforce all of these at gunpoint so we'll be back Tuesday and to talk more uh about uh, Corinne Gaines. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her first name uh, right, but, uh, you know, my heart goes out to her kids and uh, her family. We will defend these and, um, yeah, today... Today was a hard show, but thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And um, we'll be back on Tuesday. Be sure to tune in Monday to the Illumination Hour with uh, Ellen Stallone. 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. All right. Have a good night, everybody. The use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime.